Welcome to City Church of Dallas. It is so powerful what God is doing here. So just tune in, open up your heart, let the music open up your heart, worship right where you are with us in your hotel room or in your office or in your home and let God touch your life. Let the word go deep inside of your heart. Words are seeds. Let them produce a harvest. Let them be planted in the soil of your heart and let God do a great work in you. I'm so excited that you are here with us for this broadcast. I believe God will change your life. Yes, I do. Yes, yes, I 
just a moment to oh, and I won't let it pass me by and I won't go back I won't go back I can't go back to the way it before your be. presence before your presence came and changed me never gonna look back I won't go back I can't go back to the way you before your presence before your presence somebody, and somebody I won't go back no no I won't go back I can't go back to the way before your presence before your presence came and changed me never gonna look back I won't go back I can't go back to the way I've been healed, I've been set free, free, delivered, I've been changed, I've been changed. Hallelujah. It's time to sow, it's time to give. The Lord, the Lord's tithe and our offering. If you need an envelope to put it on your credit card or debit card, or if you want to keep a cash record, lift up your hand. If you're writing a check, make it to City Church. If you're giving online, please go to City Church of Dallas, C-I-T-I, spelled just like that. CityChurchofDallas.com. You can give securely on PayPal. Uh, some of our support comes from Facebook, comes from people watching online. And we really, this week, need a supernatural miracle. Our funds have been down, and we need God to move in a supernatural way. So I'm asking everybody in this place to give an amount that God lays on your heart. Give the Lord His tithe, and let your offering be something that you purpose in your heart to give. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I need an envelope. Thank you, Larry. How many appreciate the deacon of this house, Larry, and his wife, Laura? Laura makes those lunches with Larry. They go shopping on Saturday night, line up all the bags, fill them all up on Sunday. We love them so much. And Mom Miller and Angie and Dee help on that, too. So get ready, and in a minute we'll give. Let's sing about being blessed. Is that all right? Well, it's your season. It's your season to be blessed. God made you a promise. You stood the test. You stood the test. The windows of heaven pour you out a blessing. You won't be able to see. It's your season oh, yeah. to be blessed. Well, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed going out. And I'm blessed coming in. He's going Yes, he is, and pour you out a blessing. Oh, yes, because it's your season, it's your season to be blessed. It's your season to be blessed. God made you a promise. You stood the test. The windows of heaven will pour you out a blessing. Your season, your season to be blessed. Well, I've been through the fire, I've been through the 
singers and band. Ty, it's good to have you here today. Love you, darling. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, I ask you that your spirit would be so heavily upon this word that it would bring such great refreshing to us. We give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk to you today about a passage of scripture. So let's read that. Acts 3, 19. Repent. You never heard me say that. Well, not never, but you rarely. We, I give altar calls and I want people to get saved. But I'm more, uh, I don't often bring this, but I, the Lord told me to bring this word today. Repent. All, which means what? Each and every one without exception. Repent. So that means believers, non-believers, everybody that could hear him speak. Peter said, repent, all of you therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Leave that scripture up there if you would, Dee Dee. And I want to talk to you about the message today. Reflection. Someone say reflection. reflection. Repentance. Repentance. And refreshing. And refreshing. Reflection. 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 Repentance, Repentance. And refreshing. And refreshing. Um, David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. The word of God is like a mirror. So the first thing that we need to do is get a reflection, a true reflection of ourselves. Now let me say from the beginning, if you, every one of us that have, are a born again Christian, I don't care if you're struggling with an addiction. I don't care if you're struggling, struggling financially. I don't care if you're struggling with temptation. You're wrestling with sin. If you, when you are a born-again Christian, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Joyce Meyer says your who is different than your do. 
So I want you to get that secure in your mind right now. That even though you may not have arrived with your conduct yet, you are still the righteousness of God in Christ. The serpent looked at Eve and said, if you partake of this fruit in the Garden of Eden, you will be like the Most High God. The lie was that she could be. The truth was she already was. The lie is you can be the righteousness of God in Christ if you do enough good things. The truth is you already are. So let this, let's get that straight. And let's get established who Peter was talking to. This was after they, this was immediately following when they went into the temple. And there at the gate, beautiful, was a beggar. And the beggar was begging for alms. Remember this famous story? Peter and John came into the temple at the gate, beautiful. And, and what did, begging money. And what did, we've all been in that place where we've needed money. And we've had our hand out. But what did Peter say? Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Such as I have, I give it unto you. My brother right here, for five months, you've been in this situation. But let me tell you, even while you are in this situation, you still are pouring out from within yourself and ministering to others in need. We don't minister one day when we spiritually arrive or get everything, all our ducks in a row. But we minister right where we are, Larry. You don't minister. You, you began this, this bus ministry probably a month after you gave your life to the Lord. What Peter could not do three and a half years walking with Jesus after he was filled with the Holy Ghost and his body became, became the temple of the Holy Ghost. Just weeks later, wow, that very moment he preached and thousands came to God. It's not about how good you are, how many things you've conquered in your life. It's not about who you are. It's about who he is that lives on the inside of you. Amen. That's why in grief, days after Dad Miller passed, I felt the Lord speak to my heart to have you minister communion with Kenny. You and Dad Miller always did, and you did it. It was the most anointed, most powerful that I've ever seen you minister communion, the Lord's Supper, on that day. But because it's really not about our strength. The Bible says, Laura, that in our weakness, his strength is made perfect, which means mature, complete. When we feel, the Bible says, let the weak say I am strong. When we feel so weak, his strength is made perfect in those moments in our lives. When you're struggling to take crack, or I don't even know how to say it, take another hit, or crack it. You're wanting a box of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> Whatever it might be. And you're at your weakest. That's when God's strength is made perfect in your heart. Right in the middle of it. When you want to take your life. And you just think it would be so much easier. If I just take my life like my friend recently did. A pastor, a bishop over thousands of churches. Recently took his life. I don't care who you are. Life can get so hard and so heavy that you want to give up. But in those moments, God's strength is made perfect in our lives. So be encouraged today. Be encouraged today. So, so, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. And, he, and that man leaped to his feet. And I, when I read this today, I read something that I had never seen before. They went on into the temple to Solomon's porch. And 
people were gathering all around because they had seen this beggar beg and crippled for so long, lame, the Bible said, for so long. They all came and looked. And the Bible, I never, I never knew this. The Bible said that this leper, or not the leper, I'm sorry, this lame man, not a leper, a lame man that was healed was hugging Peter and John so hard he wouldn't let go of them. He just held them. I never saw that. I mean, when your life is touched by God, you are excited. You're exuberant. He was leaping and jumping. And then they all gathered and said, what is going on? So they were, there were believers there. There were non-believers. To those people who had witnessed this miracle, that's when Peter said, repent. He told them the whole story of Jesus and the crucifixion and the resurrection. And he said, repent, all of you, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's the context of this scripture. Isn't it funny that sometimes we get in a low place after we're in a high place? There's always a valley on the other side of the mountain or it wouldn't be a mountain. The valleys all around the mountain make it a mountain. But the low places all around it make that a mountain but it doesn't mean that you're always going to be on the mountain but you're on a journey yes. and on this journey there will be valleys that you go through yes. there'll be dark times there'll be shadows yes. i love the song my dad used to sing i thank you for the valley that i walk through today in the valleys when you grow in the valley on the mountain peak there's no lush vegetation but you grow and get nourished in the valley the valley is what makes you strong in God. Amen. So let's get to the topic very quickly. So refreshing, repentance, oh, reflection, repentance, and refreshing. So first of all, reflection. The word is like a mirror. You begin to look at the word and sometimes you begin to see areas you need to improve i have a very dear family member to me that was uh recently examined herself and found out she had a lump on her breast she would have never found it had she not examined herself the bible says when you take communion to search your own heart not to judge other people but to examine yourself I have felt a season of this coming on, of searching my heart. And since a week ago Friday, I've been hearing God draw my heart to repentance. So it's not that I'm pointing at you. It's that I'm saying to us as a family, as a body, let's reflect on our lives. Let's repent where we've been wrong. And let's get ready for the refreshing that God is going to send. The Bible says that righteous people fall a lot. That means they just have to keep getting back up. I love that Donnie McClurkin song. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. A saint is just a sinner who falls down, but they just keep getting back up. There's something powerful about understanding that while you are on this journey, Annalise, while you are walking this out, you will fall. I don't care if you're T.D. Jakes or Joyce Meyer or who you are, Joel Osteen. Remember when Victoria got all angry on the plane? <laughs> People have weaknesses. People fall. Sorry, Victoria. People, she didn't watch me. People fall. But they just keep getting back up. But you have to examine yourself to see what's wrong. Earlier today, after I thought about my friend who uh, examined herself and found a lump, I thought, I need to examine myself. And I took my shirt off. This is a true story. In my bathroom, I took my shirt off because I've got a lot of moles and I get more the older I get. And I took my shirt off and I looked in the mirror. And you know what I did next? 
I reached over and I turned that light off. It was more than I could take. I hadn't really looked at myself good in a long time. I turned that light off. And I turned it on and I started looking at myself. I had too many moles. One of my moles has a mole. <laughs> Aging is not a pretty thing. Youth is where it's at. Getting older sure ain't pretty. So lighten up, y'all. But we got to examine ourselves. And not just keep our head in the sand. Amen. If we really want to see what's wrong, every good corporation examines their financial situation. And they, when, when things get bad, they use it as a time to get leaner, to get more efficient and stronger. They change their thinking about certain ways and get better. When we are in a low point in our life, and a lot of the people under the sound of my voice today are in a low point of their life, we need me to, we need to examine ourselves. We need to look at the reflection in the mirror of the Word of God and say, what is wrong with my life? First of all, we have to see and look and take an honest look and say, this isn't right. And so you know what I did a week ago Friday night? I was by myself for about an hour and a half. And I, and, and I knew that God was dealing with my heart about things in my life. And all of a sudden, God began to reveal it. And I began to see it honestly. Because we don't look at ourselves honestly. Amen. We may judge somebody else. But when it comes to us, we say things like, Oh, God knows my heart. God knows I meant well. God knows I didn't mean anything by that. God knows I'm just struggling. But we don't take responsibility or look honestly at ourselves. When these big late weight loss companies, they always have you take a before. They have you get down to your swimming suit. And they have you take a picture. I didn't do that. <laughs> because you need to take a good, honest look. You got to take a good, honest look at yourself, Mike. Pastor Jeff, me, Jeff Ferguson. Jeff Ferguson. I need to look at my own heart. My own self. And see where I am wrong. And then have the humility to repent. Amen. Repent. I looked up all these Greek words today. Repent means to change your thinking. It's not, not some big emotional moment that you have to cry at the altar. It's a change of thinking. We've already received the tithe and offering. But I remember when I had been in the ministry for years and wasn't a faithful tither. I thought, well, the tithe went to Melchizedek. The tithe went to the priesthood. The tithe went to the ministers. And my brother who's in heaven now, he passed away a long time ago, he was a preacher, and he said, Jeff, the tithe is supposed to be for the working of the ministry, so it's supposed to, you're not supposed to do it, it's supposed to come to you. Amen. So, while I was on the road, I thought that. And then one day, I had a realization that I was wrong. And I had to say, God, forgive me. And I've been tithing ever since. Amen. First fruits, the Lord's first, off the top, Amen. 10%. It's holy. It's not mine. It's the Lord's. 
and I repented of a wrong way of thinking. Amen. It means you change your thinking. David did not realize what he had done wrong, but he was wrong. Nathan the prophet said, what if this person did that? And David said, well, then this needs to happen to that awful person. And Nathan said, it's you. You did that. Talking about adultery and murder and covetousness and envy. And David didn't even realize who's functioning in his anointing and functioning in his call, in his office. He did not even, he was worshiping and writing God love songs and did not even realize the sin in his life. You can have a heart after God and have sin in your life. Amen. Missing the mark. Let me tell you what I know. What I know is this. God is not just happy to have a list of rules that's just waiting for us to break it so he can punish us. Amen. But God, I've noticed, Jesus said, I give you one commandment, to love one another. They said, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? He said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Right? Amen. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Love yourself, love your neighbor, love God with all of your strength. All of your thinking, all your heart. So I find, and then he said, all the scripture, all the law, and all the prophets is hung on these commandments, this greatest commandment. So I found that when I do things, it's not just the Ten Commandments or going down through Leviticus or, or seeing every letter that Paul wrote to, to, yes, all those cities, Corinth and Rome, and but... It is looking at where I am right now and saying, does this affect what I'm doing, me loving the Lord with all of my heart, all of my thinking, all of my strength, all of my soul? Does this harm, does my way of thinking harm loving God with all of my might? If it does, it's time to repent. Amen. Amen. If what you are thinking, the way you are thinking, harms another one of God's children. Amen. This is what I've noticed the last few years of my life when God calls me to repentance. I'm doing something that harms another one of God's children or disrupts, uni or, or disrupts unity. But the way of my thinking is against somebody. i got to repent. I cannot hold that in my heart. Amen. If you're holding something in your heart against somebody and your actions and your thinking hurt somebody, it is time to repent. Amen. Amen. If what you are doing, drug addiction, alcoholism, running through money like, like it's water <laughs> because of the choices you make, if what you are doing is harming yourself it's time to repent God's not requiring things just to have a list of rules but it's to keep a spirit in the church and in his people of loving God with all of our hearts loving one another and loving ourselves that we can be all that God wants us to be with an abundant quality awesome life So you've heard it before. It's for your own good. Amen. Repent all of you therefore. And be converted. So repent means to change your thinking. Be converted means to turn. It means to turn. To turn toward the one true living God. So you change your thinking, and then in all your ways, you turn toward the one true living God. And your sin, that your sins, 
This is to people who don't know God and to people who know God. Missing the mark, it's not that you're going to burn in fire forever. If you're born again, born again people don't go to hell. It's about having your sins that they may be blotted out. I look at that word blotted out. We just did a design house down in um, DeSoto. And three of the walls were painted dark, dark burgundy. And they had to put lots of, Lisa, what's that stuff called? Huh? Kilts. Kilts. Lots of kilts. K-I-L-Z. On that wall. To be blotted out means to whitewash and plaster. That's what it means. So it covers it up to the place where none of the stain can get through. But it's blotted out. But it doesn't just require the blood. According to this scripture, it requires a changing of your thinking. And a changing, a turning from what you've been doing. The blood will keep you from hell. But if you want that life that God has designed for you here, then it's going to take a change of thinking to turn toward the one true living God when the times of refreshing have you all ever been so hot outside or in a room with no air in August or in a vehicle with no air conditioning in the middle of the city with concrete everywhere and asphalt and it was 110 degrees in your car? How many ever been there like that? Or so hot you had to walk 10 feet from people just so they didn't get a whiff. Come up here and walk with us. No, it's all right. I'm good back here. So hot. This word refreshing means a cool blast of water. A cool blast of water that's going to refresh your life. Where? From the presence of the Lord. I give you my life. I lay it all down. I bow at your feet where mercy is found. All that I am, all that is mine. Completely, I freely, I give you my life, I lay it all down, I bow at your feet, where mercy is found, all that I Stand your feet across this room. I give you my life. I lay it all down. I bow at your feet where mercy is found. All that I am, all that is mine, completely. I want everybody to look up here at me. If you want to repent for those times of refreshing, to change your thinking, I don't care if you're a born-again believer or you're not, whoever you are, but if you feel God has moved on your heart to do this, step out of your seat right now and come up here. Right now. Come on. Come on. Step right on up here. 
Come right on up. Hallelujah. Come right on up. God knew, didn't he? God knew. God knew, Francine. <laughs> come on up. If you want to repent and turn around, just come right on up, right on here. Come on. Step your feet on this, step onto this carpet. I bow at your feet where mercy is found. All that I am. All that I am. Come on, if you want to give your life. All that is mine. Come on. Oh, completely. Come on, if you want to give your life. I really, I give you my life. I lay it all down. I bow at your feet where mercy is found. All that I am, all that is mine. Oh, completely, I freely give you my life. Everybody in this place, say, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me. I repent. I repent. Help me to change my thinking. Help me to change my thinking. I give you my life. I give you my life. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my Help life. Help me to turn to you. Help me to turn to you. Now send a refreshing in my life. Now send a refreshing. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive your refreshing. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. Every hour, every hour of every day and every breath I ever take, Lord, I will not hesitate to give you my life. Everything I hold on to right now, I give it back to you. I promise what I'm going to do. Is give you my life. Sing with us. Everything. Every hour of every day and every breath I ever take. Lord, I will not hesitate to give you my life. Everything. Everything I hold on to right now I give it back to you. I promise what I'm going to do is give you my life. I give you my life. I lay it all down. I bow at your feet where mercy is found. All that I am, all that Completely, I freely sing completely, completely, I freely sing completely, completely, I freely give you my Everybody in this place say, Lord, Lord I, believe. I believe Jesus, Jesus you, are the Son of God. you are the Son of God. You died for me. You, for me. you rose, again. rose again. You are alive. You are alive. I, give I give you my life. Fill my body, Fill my body. with your spirit, with your spirit. And, you use me and use me to help others. To help others. Now lift up your hand. I'm about to bless you. I speak the blessing of the Lord over your life. I decree you're above only and not beneath. You're the lender and not the borrower. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I speak the favor of God and the blessing of God and the encouragement of the Lord, the refreshing of God. Whoa, I feel that right now. Someone receive that refreshing. It's coming two ways. It's falling on you. And it's rising within you. Everything, Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And the Spirit of the Lord is falling on you right now too. 
the rain from heaven. I speak a refreshing in your life. Someone shout, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I give you my life. I lay it all down. I bow at your feet where mercy is found. All that I am, all that is mine, completely, I really give you my life. God bless you. We'll see you Tuesday night. I love you. God bless you. You're dismissed. Welcome to City Church. We just finished a fantastic service here. Uh, people have just left the sanctuary. There is a move of the Spirit of God that was incredible. What a m powerful move of God in this place. The music, the worship, uh, everybody here. We had maybe 25 to 30 on our bus from the Austin Street Shelter. They're part of our City Church families. Our ushers are in our choir. Um, they are just part of our family. Uh, we had people here from Hillcrest House, part of our ministry. They are part of our family. It's our HIV ministry, Supper Club ministry there. Um, so many great things are happening here through our bus ministry, through our homeless ministry, through our outreach to HIV. God is moving in this place, and there's so much more that God wants to do. Uh, the Sunday before Mother's Day 2013, our drummer Danielle Pocket Brown, she was in Africa and she got a sub drummer to drum for her for our worship service and we were in a little tiny, um, we've grown a lot since then just in a year, but we were in a little tiny uh, 1450 seat sanctuary, packed that little place. and. And uh, the drummer brought her mom, who sat in the front row, and I could hear her singing. Her name was Donna. And I said, where are you from? I was hoping she lived in Dallas, because I wanted her to sing at City Church. We're very musical. And she said, I stay at the Austin Street Shelter. I said, what is that? She said, I'm homeless. I've been homeless. That's where I live. I stay at the shelter. And my heart just broke because my idea of homelessness was a cardboard sign at the intersection, dusty, dirty people. That's what I thought homeless was. I didn't know it was a pretty lady in a nice outfit who didn't have enough money to live anywhere. And um, my heart was broken. I said, Dee Dee, that's a lady that works in our ministry. I said, call Austin Street and invite Donna. And maybe if she wants to bring a friend, we'll provide a nice dinner for her before church next Sunday, Mother's Day. So she called and Donna did bring a friend. She brought 47 friends. Uh, so we were there in a caravan of cars and picked Donna and her 47 friends up and served them chicken cordon bleu and parmesan crusted tilapia. A phenomenal meal. We had an incredible worship service and I was ruined. I no longer cared about where I lived, what I wore, what I drove. My my life was impacted by this incredible touch from people that were homeless and I knew that I had to make a difference. So City Church began a homeless ministry. We raised money and we bought a bus cash and now we go and we pick up from Austin Street uh, the homeless people and bring them here and they're not, it's not us and them, it's just us. They're part of our family and I appreciate all that God does at City Church. It's an exciting thing to see lives turned around. It's exciting to baptize people from the homeless shelter. It's exciting to see them serve God. Last week, one lady who is now a part of our worship team in a home, bought a new car, um, is a contributor financially. Ever, all, almost all of the people from there contribute something financially. But this lady's tithing is significant. Her life is completely, she's like a butterfly who used to crawl on the ground and now she flies. It's amazing when you put worth on people, how that God part in them springs to life and they believe again. So I praise God for what he's doing in this ministry at City Church.